Hi everybody, Nicole from Hair of the Dog today, and I'm here with Shalene Jones from Alberta, Canada, and we have a very special blog for you today. Um, I'm actually working with Shalina in my business pet photography class, and I'm going to give her some feedback on basically all of her stuff. So her website, um, her what to expect guide for her clients, and her pricing. And she um, graciously volunteered to record it for all of you to see. So thank you. One million times, Shalina, that is amazing. Um, thanks so much for being here. I'm honored to be here. Thank you, Nicole. Oh, thanks, thanks. Um, so yeah, so tell us a little bit about your business. How long have you been in business? Kind of what your business looks like now, where you want it to go. Like, just, just give us a lowdown on, on okay. where you're at. Um, so I've been technically in business for about five years now. And um, I was living actually in BC and then we moved to Prairie in Alberta there uh, about four years ago. And that was really the turning point where I decided that, you know what, I, I can do this. This can become a business. I can charge my clients for my work and I don't have to charge $50. Um, so once, yeah, <laughs> um, it was also that when I moved here that I changed my business model more into the IPS um, and selling prints. It, uh, you know, started to become more important to me, not only hearing everybody preach about it and how important it was, but just on a personal level. I looked around my house and I realized that, you know, I had no prints of my dogs and all I had was photos on my cell phone. Um, I've had my cell phone crash several times and I was like, you know what, I, I don't want this for my clients. So ultimately, I've been doing IPS for the total of the four years. Um, it's been going really well. The only problem is, is um, of course, getting those sales, which I know everybody has a problem with. Um, so I've been trying and tweaking and changing things over the last four years, and I finally feel like I'm getting there. I'm almost there. Mm -hmm, uh, mm -hmm. And then I decided, you know what, I think I can really benefit from Nicole's business class. It's been something that I've been eyeballing for probably almost two years now. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Same boat as me. <laughs> Highly recommend doing it. Um, I, it was a big eye opener uh, for me and just seeing that, you know, if just a few small changes and things that I am doing already could make a huge difference for my sales. Yeah. Um, so one of my biggest struggles I would find is, you know, the inquiry and just capturing that client and getting them and showing them the value in it. Of course, it's, it's tough because you, we lack the self-confidence in right, order right. to really we all, yeah, we're all there. <laughs> yeah. So, you know, going to the business course has definitely been a, a huge help in that aspect and giving myself that push that, you know, yeah. I, I can do it. Um, ultimately what I want to do with my business, like most people is I want to quit my day job. Mm -hmm. I want to stop working, you know, 80 hours a week. Right. <laughs> just, uh -huh. just to make it. Yeah. Um, and ideally, you know, I, it would be nice if I could have, consistently four or five clients, you know, give or take yep. during this, the busy hours or yep. busy months, sorry. And, uh, yeah, I think, I think my, nice. my average sales right now are approximately, they vary between, I'd say 600 to 1200. Okay. Clients, which is not terrible. All right. Um, right. Yeah. But I think we can do better just to, yeah. and I think it comes down to the education and the inquiries and getting my pricing structure correct. Yep. Perfect. Awesome. Yeah. I glanced over your pricing and there's definitely a couple of tweaks. I think that we can, um, just a couple little tweaks. We can bump that up quite a bit. So yay. <laughs> I like that. <laughs> That's always my favorite thing. When if I'm rambling, to me. Me. <laughs> no, you're good. Yeah, no, you're fine. I love when people get in touch with me and be like, Oh my God, I just had the biggest sale ever. It makes me happy. Um, all right. So I'm going to share my screen and we will go to your website first. And take a look there because website is really where all the magic happens and um, you know I don't care how great anyone's images are if your website is not pulling your clients in then it, it's you're gonna have a really hard time having a profitable business because even if a clients refer to you they're still gonna go to your website so you need to make sure your website's working for you um, so yeah so there's your website I love it it's clean um, it's, it's not cluttered. I love the light white background. Um, there was a trend, oh, a while ago, people would have really dark websites, but it's really hard to read. So mm -hmm. definitely having this nice light, um, negative space kind of, you know, airy website is good. Um, 
yeah, you don't need a ton of stuff. You have your important pages right here. Uh, tell us what you do right here really quickly. Um, you do just want to make sure, uh, and you do have where you are right here. Um, oh, yep, and right here too. So good. So you have where you're located and who you serve right here on that front page, which is really important. So yeah, I mean, I think this is pretty good. The one thing I might change down here is I would maybe take this about me section and put that on its own page and get a picture of you. <laughs> yeah, I'm, I'm working on that. Okay, I awesome. <laughs> awesome. Um, Cause people want to meet you. I mean, we're, we're still, even if your name, your business isn't your name, it's still a very personal business and our clients mm -hmm. want to know us. So um, that's really a selfie with my dog would suffice. So yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> um, yeah. So that would be good. Um, I'm actually going to be, um, I just recorded it. I need to put it on my site. I have a couple other things to update on my site, but I'm going to have when people fill out an inquiry form, going to take them to a page on my website that has a little video of me saying, hello, thank you so much for inquiring. Um, so that they kind of get that interaction with me, even though it's a video. Uh, I'm curious to see if that helps anything because then, then people feel like they know you a little bit more. Um, just because they could see your mannerisms and all that stuff. Um, so they might be a little bit more connected. So I don't know. Jury's still out. I haven't tested it yet, but I'm going to try. <laughs> so yeah, so homepage is good. I would put that about me on another page. I would, um, and I like that you have, you want a book right here. The one thing that would be awesome if you could figure out how to do it, I don't know if your template would let you, you might have to have a secondary menu. Then maybe you could put like way at the top. If you could put a, um, contact me or get started or inquire here uh, button on the top right corner of your website. It's like the most valuable um, real estate on your website. So if you can figure out how to do that, that would be awesome and make it like, you know, one of your brand colors. So it kind of stands out yeah. um, would be awesome. And how you title those, I think is important too, because you don't necessarily want to say book now because that's like, you know, asking, for a proposal on the first date. You know, people just kind of maybe want some more information. So make it really easy of get some more info, um, inquire or, you know, something like that instead of like book <laughs> because, um, cause a Give lot of times, <laughs> yeah, right. They might they'd be like, Oh, I kind of want to learn more, but I don't want to get, they don't want to get involved. They just want to learn more. They don't necessarily want to, they don't want to learn more and then have to say no, or even just to like ignore you like some of them do, you know, cause then it's just, you might want to be easy and just want to learn more. So just be aware of that. I think that would help website inquiries. Um, investment, the, I would maybe, well, two things. For the actual investment of your pricing, I would have, um, actually you have a product page. I would put your products on your investment page because these can kind of be together. So I would have, you know, investment. Here's what I offer. Here's what I specialize in. Look at these beautiful products. And I could, I would put maybe starting at like, so whatever your smallest size is starting at that price. Um, just so they see, you want to have a little bit of pricing on there. Cause right now it's just contacting me. And again, that's just like, uh, people might not want to, raise their hand and commit <laughs> that much. They just might want to learn a little bit more. Um, so I would combine those pages and have just at least that starting at there. This is super cute. Um, and then I don't know that you need all this information on the referral page here. I would maybe just work this into your workflow that you give something to like this, print this off to put in a little, um, you know, postcard with their order because really that's for past clients. Yeah. Um, so I would take that off your website here because here you're talking to people that haven't booked you yet and yeah. there you can have another way to get those to, to your yeah. past clients. Um, so yeah, product page. I love the pictures. It's awesome. I would just add a little starting at price. Um, FAQs are good. I would maybe just add a picture on here or two, like maybe a picture on the right up here and a picture on the left down here, just to break up some of the thing. You don't have a too much text, which is good. I get really wordy, I'm really bad at that. So like your longest paragraph here is really just a couple of these and they're not too long, people will read them. Um, or at least scan the questions that they're interested in. That's good. 
Um, contact us is good. Email address and phone number. Awesome. Thank you, puppy. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and then, yeah, blog is good too. So yeah, yeah so that I, all. I need to blog more. I, do more. I know, me too. <laughs> Which is your what to expect. So are they getting this after they book? Yes. So they're, okay. well, no, that's a lie. Um, so they're getting this, like, after they've made the inquiry, I've had a full conversation with them, um, discussed everything and kind of given them a ballpark on pricing. Okay. Um, then I usually send out my pricing guide with this and just let them know that this goes over the process a little bit more in detail um, after the session. Okay. All right. Sounds good. Um, your images are beautiful, by the way. There is, there's no reason that you shouldn't be earning minimum four figures every shoot. So. Thank you. Um, yeah, don't worry about that. Oh, was there, did you have a gallery on your website? Did I miss that? No, I didn't. Okay, you need a gallery. No. Um, I have, I know, I took, so I had one and then I was redoing it and I ended up getting sidetracked to doing product photos yeah. and I forgot to finish. I hear you, I hear you. <laughs> no worries. Yeah, throw that back up there. Don't, don't bog it down with too much. Like 10 images is fine. So just pick and make sure that they're kind of cohesive. So I would put them all on, a, um, like for instance here, like these three images are the color is just like perfect and they're so sharp and amazing. And then this one, like, you know, and this is bright and colorful, but like these two images on here just maybe aren't quite as strong as the others. Mm -hmm. um, so just kind of look at them all together and with critical eye, or you can ask for, you know, other people to take a look. Um, and like even here, like you have all these bright colors and this is great, even though it's not super colorful, it still has that really shallow depth of field and just, it's gorgeous. Um, so yeah, so just, and this one, I love this one down here too. That's really pretty. And your, are those all three your puppers? Those are mine, yeah. I love them. They're so cute. Um, so yeah, so that's just a random two cents. Um, okay, so I love how it's set up. I love that you have images. I love that there's not more than a couple sentences per paragraph because people can scan and read quickly because people are lazy and that goldfish have more attention than humans these days. <laughs> um, the viewing, dive in, you're showing artwork, good work um products um product selection payment plans yeah that's all good i think that's really really good i i don't know that you need any other information in there um the only thing to think about is if you wanted to put your product pictures in here too but mm -hmm. or or keep your pricing separate than this you know it, it could go either way like I, I have mine separate because I like to be able to send an inquiry like right away and then the pricing after I've had some sort of interaction with them, whether it's uh, online or hopefully on the phone. Um, so yeah, but I think this looks great. It's designed well. It's again, just minimalist and looks good. Um, I would maybe just, you have your business name right down here that kind of gets lost. Mm -hmm. So, I mean, maybe you can put your logo make this little square a little bit bigger and put your logo around this what to expect somewhere. Okay. Um, but it looks good. Thank you. Yeah, you're welcome. Do you have any questions on website or that guide? Uh, no, I think. Okay. If you have I will, any questions. I was going like to, like, cause I was thinking about um, kind of combining the what to expect and more of like a, um, because like, it'd be nice to be able to send something when somebody inquires, be able yep. to send something out to them right away that yep. you know, does have some of my work and has a little bit of information, but not too much. And then be able to have that phone conversation, like to pull them in. Yep. 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 So I do want to work on something like that. And I think I'm going to pull some of the information from that, what to expect. Yeah. Yeah. Cause most of that actually would go really well because it's still pretty fairly high level. So, I mean, I really think you could just, tweak this a smidge and send that because um, it, it, it's pretty, it's pretty good. Thank you. All right. Let me share screen again. All right. Number time. Ah! <laughs> <laughs> My favorite time. All right. So are you giving them, is this the, like the actual form that clients are receiving it in? Yes. Okay. Um, it's a lot. I know. Yes. 
Yeah, that's what I'm gonna say. That's a lot of numbers, and most clients will be like, "Oh my god," and just like too much overload, shut down, not make a decision. I'll, or even if they're really interested, I'll deal with that later. And then later never comes because everyone's super busy. Um, so you have your product photos already, which is by far the biggest challenge <laughs> to, to creating a product guide with some pictures. Um, it only took me four years to get those. <laughs> I know. I, I honestly just did mine. Like I think I, I did a Facebook Live in the group in the spring because yeah. it that was kind of that extra push me because i was like i'm kind of cold doing it i need to get yeah. mine <laughs> I mean, it was so bad i literally for two years i'm like i need new product photos oh i need new product photos i went like a year and a half with nothing i'm like what am i doing um and it made a huge difference and, it does and i've yeah. even had lots of people that have gone to the product page and then they've um messaged me and said oh you know i love this and i really like this and they yeah. want that for their dogs right right so it has helped Yep, absolutely. Yeah, because people don't know what an image pop is. They might know what a canvas is, but they don't really know what these things are. Um, so my other question before we dive into this is you have a whole bunch of square sizes on here. Do you ever shoot or sell square stuff? Yes. Okay. All right, very good. Usually a time answer is like, no. <laughs> I know I never really did. Surprisingly, um, I've actually sold quite a few square. Um, just usually, usually it comes into like a collection and somebody will do like a huge wall portrait yep. and then they'll do four or like two squares on okay. each side, right? Yeah. Or, yeah. So gotcha. they actually surprisingly are fairly common. Yep. All right. Awesome. I would then look at doing your pricing, um, maybe based on the long side. And okay. then because having this many sizes in here, just people's brains shut down. Yeah. Um, so maybe you have priced up to 20 inches priced up to 24 inches. The only thing to caution there is um, some might be like, I want a 16 by 20, but it doesn't look good as a 16 by 20 and it needs to be a 16 by 24 for the aspect ratio. But yeah. then you're in a weird situation where you're like telling them, no, I need to spend more money and go up to the 24 size. So then I would always just comp them that extra four inches and just charge them for the 16 by 20. Cause mm -hmm. I didn't want anyone to ever feel like I was like, not letting them buy what they wanted <laughs> and telling them it doesn't look good. Um, so yeah, so right now I have mine. Um, it's just, it's up to 11 by 14, up to 16 by 24, up to 20 by 30, up to 30 by 40, up to 40 by 60. Um, so I have five sizes and anything in the middle of those, um, you know, just goes to whatever, the next size up is. Mm -hmm. And the same thing with like a square. Um, you know, if, if I had somebody that did like a, a 20 by 20, I just charge them for the 16 by 24. Like I kind of know what the prices are. So I just kind of know where those random squares would fit in there. Um, so just something to think about. Like any time you can condense all these prices is going to be very, very beneficial. Um, and I don't think you need all these sizes, like your canvas wrap, you have 11 by 14, 12 by 18, 16 by 24, 16 by 20. Um, you know, and the difference here is, uh, you know, negligible. So like, look for pricing breaks that you can jump up like a hundred dollars, a hundred dollars, a hundred dollars. Um, and also make sure that your pricing is four times cost of goods sold for the wall art. You don't necessarily like, if you just take the cost of your wall art and multiply it times four, you're pretty good there because I mean, your time is going to be a little bit less negligible. It's one image to create. Um, the part where you really need to make sure that you're charging for your time is in albums and single prints. Um, which I don't think I saw. You, are you doing single prints or do you not I do? do? Yeah, on the second page, I do have some and they're not priced high enough. <laughs> oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> You're right. <laughs> but on it, like, I don't, uh, surprisingly, I don't sell a large amount of just yeah. single prints. Awesome. No, that's fine. But I don't, even at my reveal sessions, like, I don't show them unless anybody yeah. asks what they are. Very right. Perfect. So. Um, yeah, and some print strategies, you know, that you can use. Um, is I group mine, mine are a uh, set of five. So if you want desk prints, they're eight by 10 and smaller, it's 449 for five of them. Um, but of course, if somebody got, you know, some wall art or an album and they wanted just a print, I will sell them one print for $75, but I just don't have it on my product guide. 
So that way, if somebody comes and it's like, because I get those calls, oh, I really just want an 8x10. Well, I don't sell an 8x10. So it's just yeah. not on the product, <laughs> which is a good way to have that conversation <laughs> without me being like, um, you know, no, you can't really, but it's there. Yeah. Oh, but you have to buy more because that gets awkward. Um, all right. So yeah, so I would look at, and the other thing I'm looking at here too, like you have your metal prints and your canvas prints. The pricing is pretty darn close. So I would just take whatever the more expensive one is and make it the same price for both of those. Um, and like anything that you can make basically the same price. So I'm just looking down at those canvases. Hold on, 30 by 40. Yeah, well. Yeah, maybe the canvases would be a different price. So maybe you have one price for the fine art mounts. Is that just like a mounted print that they would do framing themselves? No, the fine art mounts, it's, um, it all comes mounted. So oh, okay. Like, yeah. like a standout kind of thing? Yeah, it's just a different um, gotcha. way of printer, right? Like some people want just the, yeah. But it's all yep. finished. Like they wouldn't have to the frame. Nice, nice. So I would maybe make two, two prices for your wall art. The fine art mounts and the float wraps, maybe there's one price for those and it's one price for your metal prints or canvas prints. Um, okay. And so it's just like A or B. And they can choose either of those finish in A or B, but then it's just so much easier for people to see and just have five prices for each one. So it's just literally like up to this size, up to this size, up to this size, up to this size. Um, and just kind of have an idea of where your squares fit in there for the people that might want the squares. Um, and that will just simplify that and put a picture in those couple prices and then people won't have that overwhelm when they look at this. And then moving down to album blocks. Um, so the 10 five by sevens for 259 or there's 20 for only $40 more. Um, so you should not quite double it, but like that 20, if the 10 is 250, like 20 should be 400 um, because you have to edit 10 more images. So you have a lot of time in there. That's kind of should be priced like an album. Um, and people love those suckers. I have, I just sell the five by sevens. I probably sell one like every other session and I have mine at five ninety nine. So people love them and they, they will spend money for them. So don't be afraid to bump that up a little bit because there's 10 images. Um, yeah. And yeah, your digital, as you said, you knew you need to raise those. So I do. Yes, yes you do. <laughs> um, <laughs> Yeah, and then, do you sell these specialty things? No, nah, no, I was actually constantly just taking those off. Yeah, I just take them off. And then you can use them as like a fun little, you know, like as a gift or just have a couple in your studio. Afterwards, somebody asks about them, they can add it on. Mm -hmm. um, you know, but I wouldn't take up real estate here. I would focus on your wall art. Okay. And then over to your... Oh wait, so now we have canvas. Oh, these are clusters. It's, it's just different products, yeah. Yeah, so. okay. Yeah, so I would have all your wall art together on one page and try to keep the prices, like bunch them together for the prices. Mm -hmm. um, for your mounted gift prints, I would just have eight by 10 or smaller and call them gift prints. I would put that 11 by 14 maybe up on your, eh, no, maybe not. Just get rid of it. <laughs> well, <laughs> have a price for it. You don't yeah. have to have it on there. Yeah. Like, um, you know, I, I just have mine. It's two fifty, And if somebody asks, I can tell them, but, um, but I don't tell them <laughs> that it's available. <laughs> um, so yeah, so have a, a price and a good price because, you know, if they're getting an 11 by 14, that's their wall art purchase from you. So you need to, it needs to be, you need to make it really profitable. Um, because you need to make a certain amount of money from a session just because that's the only way we cover our time. Um, so don't feel bad doing that. Um, all right. So image blocks. I did just raise all the prices on those. All right. Awesome. Just as, cause then they're more on par with all the other products. So yeah. Have... What are the image blocks? Are those for the wall or are those like on the desk? Um, oh, no, they, they'd be for the wall. They're pretty they big. Or they are for the wall. Yeah. Yeah. But they, like I have, um, three of them on a floating shelf yep. and they sit really nicely on there. Um, I have one above my cupboards in my kitchen. Yeah. They're really quite versatile, which a lot of people like. That's fun. 
Um, so one thing, yeah, because you have a lot of wall art options, mm -hmm. just make sure you like all of them and you're selling all of them. If there's some that don't sell or you're not really into, you know, take them off. Three or four wall art, wall art types is fine. Um, I mean, it's not bad to have more, but anytime you start getting more and more options, people start to get mm, a little bit harder to make decisions. They get decision fatigue and they're not gonna be able to make as many decisions and your sale is gonna end up by being smaller. So, so would by four would be? Yeah, you know, three or four, just depending on what you like and what you feel like your work looks best on. And if somebody comes to you and wants, um, you know, something that's not on there, you can still do it. Like, for instance, I don't have canvases on my product guide anymore. I just have framed canvases. Um, and I was going to totally take canvases off because I don't love them anymore, but everybody still wants to buy them. <laughs> so I just sell them at the same price as my frame prints. Um, and which is my, I have my traditional frame prints, which is kind of my, my entry level ones that are frame prints from Bay Photo. And my canvases, I'm just pricing along with those. And then my, um, I have my frame canvases and then my high end is my framed um, acrylics and my watercolor float mounted museum prints, I call them, um, from Jonathan Penny. So I really have three, three pricing levels for my wall art, but then, I guess I have kind of five finishes. So, you know, if you got these down to three pricing levels and then you had the variety of finishes, I think that's okay. But having all these different price lists, like, you know, yeah, it just, it becomes too many numbers for people to, to manage. Yeah. And so I, have that, found, I have found that the people scan over it, but yeah, when they actually come to the reveal session, I'm like, Oh, so did you, you know, have a budget of mine? And you know, did you, is there anything that you really liked? And they're like, no, Okay. Yeah. 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 And you don't have to ask, don't ask about the budget. If they have a budget in mind, they will tell you, I have found out. Um, and never judge what you think your client is going to spend. I had a client just recently that I really thought that I'm like, Oh, um, they were an auction client. And I, I just, I just didn't think they were my typical client. And so we're, and they had all the pricing and we're in the ordering thing and they're ordering two pieces of wall art and my album. And I'm just like, oh my God, I think you saw the prices, right? And then didn't bat an eye. Like, okay. I'm like, oh, oh, I totally misjudged you. And that is bad. And I know I shouldn't. And I'm sorry. <laughs> so, so yeah, I don't ask people budgets. They will let you know. Sometimes I do have clients who are like, ah, I can't, I can't, you know, I need to try to, you know, not spend a fortune. Um, yeah. So then I try to steer them. And with the wall art, I say, these are your most cost effective out options. And these are a little bit more expensive. Um, so yeah, um, but I think doing those, all right, so hold on, let me jump down to albums here. Um, I have found a really, really good strategy for doing albums is having one kind of approachable low-end album, which could be your image blocks. Um, you know, make those image blocks, I think you can move them up to like almost 500 bucks for the 10, the 10, the 10 five by sevens. Um, at least $400 for the 10 five by sevens. So make that your like low end album. And then you can have your six by eight, you know, bump that up a little bit higher to maybe it had, you know, to like, eh, you know, maybe somewhere in thousand dollars and then your bigger one, bump that up to like $1,500. And then with your two highest ones, I let them put it, all the images from their session in it. So if it ends up being a 15 spread album instead of 10, that's fine. I mean, I, I cost me, it's like marked up 10 times. So yeah. it's fine. Um, uh, it's not a problem. And I've found, cause I used to have my albums price that, um, at, you know, three different albums, still the same ones. The little one was always five by five with 10 images. And then the middle one I had as an eight by eight with 30 images or 25 images. And then they could add extra images for an extra little bit amount of money. Um, and then the same thing with the high end album. And I wasn't selling a ton of albums, but then I switched it to my middle and my high end album could include all of your images. And the funniest thing is <laughs> I started selling those albums all of the time, but most people still cut down to about 25 images. Cause I told them we could include all of them and I will add some spreads. However, you know, if you put, if you don't put all of them in, then your pictures are bigger. So I would show them a couple samples. Like here's one with, 
you know, 40 or 50 pictures in it. And here's one with 30 pictures. Yeah. And so they would usually call it down to that lower number anyway, but I was selling like twice as many. <laughs> yeah. So it's a really good motivator for people to, um, to upgrade, you know, or to get that album because then they can have all of their images. They don't have to make that decision. They don't have to leave anything on the table. Yeah. Um, so yeah. And then other question for you for your, um, your pricing, is it all a la carte? Do you have any bonus schedules? Do you have any collections? No. Okay. Um, so I think something else that could help, um, you know, keep getting you up to a, a higher level <laughs> is I would go ahead and maybe create a couple different things you could try, depending on what you feel like. I would maybe try to create three collections and with those, I have them in business course. Um, if you really want to get in and see them, but I basically, instead of saying, Hey, you get a 20 by 30 canvas, I say you get a $500 wall art credit. So they can use that $500, whatever they want. And if they decide to get a $700 piece of wall art, I add $200 to the credit <coughs> price. Um, so my lowest one would be a, a wall art credit that would get them like an 11 by 14, a small piece. Um, and then like the little tiny album or an album block with 10 images and like two or three prints. And then my middle one was a little bit of a higher, um, wall art credit that would get them, I don't know, maybe a 16 by 24 ish size, um, or maybe a 20 by 30 and the medium album and a couple prints and plus or minus a handful of digital files are a great thing to throw into those collections to like really jack up the value. And it yeah. doesn't increase your costs. And then the high end one would include the nicest album, a really nice mm -hmm. wall art credit, um, all the high res digital files. Cause I'm putting them in the album anyway. Um, so that's one way to do that. And I found that was really, really successful and really popular for many, many years. Um, and then I also now have a create your own collection, which is essentially you buy one piece of wall art, at least 16 by 24 or larger and any two other image or any other two products on my price list, at least two other products. And you save 25% on everything. Um, that works really well. The other thing you can think of doing, if there's certain products that you want to, um, that you want to kind of push. So if you want people to do the albums, but then you're like, all right, how can I upsell these albums? So maybe if they do your higher, your middle and your highest end album, like maybe it's a thousand dollars, $1,500, they can add on all the digital files that are in that album for like 500 bucks or something like that. Cause you're already editing them <laughs> yeah. and they're buying the products and the stuff that you want them to have. So why not, you know, add a little gravy on there for you and they get something great at a great value because those are worth, you know, worth a lot. Yeah. Um, so yeah, so I would try some of those and just, just test them out and see. Um, yeah, I mean, the other thing that I know some people, I've never done it, but I have a friend that did it and she was really successful with it was just at certain price points, spend $1,000, save 10%, spend $2,000, save 15%, spend $3,000, save like 25% or something like yeah. that. Um, just make sure that you do your cost of goods sold up to like pick $1,000 of your most expensive things or like what your, has your lowest cost of goods sold and then take that discount and make sure you're still okay and under 25% cost of goods sold. Um, so you just have to make sure that it works. Um, so yeah. So yeah, I think if you do a couple of those little tweaks, um, and if you can add some pictures onto your investment guide, um, uh, you're going to get more inquiries that convert and also, um, get that average sale up quite a bit. Yeah. Yay. Yay. <laughs> awesome. Do you have any questions? I don't think so. Okay. Well, if you do, just, you know where to find me. Yeah. <laughs> All right. Perfect. No, I think that's good. No, thank you very much. For your time. Oh, you're so welcome. Thank you so much.